Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks for joining us today, uh, Director Mueller. And I, I want to thank you not only for being here, for, but also for serving our country. Yours is not an easy job. Last year, you expressed some concerns about the National Defense Authorization Act uh, for 2012, uh, specifically in a letter that you wrote to Senator Levin in November of last year. Um, you uh, expressed some concerns with section with what became Section 1022 of that legislation, stating that you were worried about um, th that provision introducing a degree of uncertainty and potentially inhibiting the FBI's capacity to um, uh, convince covered arrestees to cooperate immediately and to provide important intelligence. Uh, th my concerns with the NDAA focused much more with what became Section 1021 um, to some extent, I think the, the, the President indicated that he shared some of those concerns. He indicated in his signing statement on December 31st, 2011, as follows. He said, I want to clarify that my administration will not authorize the indefinite military detention without trial of American citizens. Indeed, I believe that doing so would break with our most important traditions and values as a nation. My administration will interpret Section 1021 in a manner that ensures that any detention it authorizes complies with the constitutional laws of war and other applicable law. Um, in light of that statement, uh, you know, I, I was encouraged by that statement. I think it's good. I, I, I still had some concerns that uh, future administrations might not hold that view or that uh, this administration might change its position at some point. In light of that concern, I joined uh, with Senator Feinstein in introducing S-2003, the Due Process Guarantee Act, to ensure that U.S. citizens apprehended on American soil are not detained indefinitely um, without charge or without trial. So I guess my first question is, do you, um, do you, share, your, do you share the President's commitment, as I assume you would, as to the fact that U.S. citizens shouldn't be detained indefinitely without trial under 1021? Well, uh, uh, yes, uh, in the sense that, uh, uh, yes, uh, yep, yes. Uh, but let me just say, uh, there is no change to our activities. In other words, our authorities remain the same. How we handle uh, things are not changed by the president's uh, 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 declaration. But yes, I would assume that would happen. That would be the case. Some, uh, some people have suggested that um, military detention may be necessary, uh, you know, in, in some of these circumstances because uh, FBI and other civilian authorities lack the resources or the capabil capabilities to deal with the, uh, the unique circumstances associated with the apprehension and detention of terrorism suspects. And so um, uh, um, my question for you on that point is, uh, what are the FBI's abilities in this regard? I mean, do, do you feel the FBI would lack the capacity to handle these circumstances to deal with the apprehension and detention of uh, uh, terrorism suspects? Uh, no. I, 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 the answer at the outset is no, but, but we may be talking about um, a, a different class. If you're talking about covered 1022 persons, uh, we are talking about individuals who are non-U.S. citizens, uh, individuals who are, are participating in a plot uh, with al-Qaeda and the like, where 1022 kicks in. Uh, going back to your initial uh, question, I had some concerns about clarity as to what would happen at the time of arrest. Those concerns have been uh, put to rest by the uh, protocol that had been, uh, was established by uh, the President. Uh, regardless of whether it is uh, a person is detained in the United States uh, by uh, the FBI or ultimately by, it could be by the military, uh, if, it's, if it happens on a base, for instance, I have uh, no question but that uh, ourselves and the military would be capable of uh, uh, handling the uh, uh, consequent investigation and intel search for intelligence. Okay. So uh, given this protocol that was developed in light of the President's uh, signing statement on December 31st, and given what you just added to that, is, would it be fair for me to assume that the administration would not object to legislation that would put this rule in place by statute? 
In other words, to say that we wouldn't use Section 1021 to indefinitely detain U.S. citizens? I, 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 that would have to go to the Department of Justice. That's a step too far for me. Understood. Understood. Um, in your testimony, in your, uh, your written testimony, you stated that you support the reauthorization of the FISA Amendments Act. Um, among other things, those amendments authorize the government to surveil various categories of uh, non U.S. persons abroad outside the United States without the need for a court order for each individual target. Although these amendments uh, don't appear to allow the government intentionally uh, to target a U.S. person or intentionally to target any person uh, all on U.S. soil, it does seem that the amendments have the potential to result in in warrantless surveillance of communications that in, involve U.S. citizens. Um, can, can you explain, in light of this potential, what steps can be taken, what steps might be taken in order to protect U.S. citizens? I, let me just say we're uh, concerned about both the thrust of the statute as well as the provisions of the statute that minimize the possibility of this, uh, this happening. But beyond that, uh, I would have to do it in, uh, in closed session. Okay. But you, you do share the concern that, that there is that potential, and you share a commitment to taking steps to protect U.S. citizens. Yes, and I, my, my understanding is, uh, as the, the statute was wending its way through Congress, those concerns were uh, raised and addressed uh, in the statute. And yes, we fully uh, comply and, and understand the thrust as well as the, the letter of the, of the, of the statute. Okay. Uh, I see my time has expired. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Director. Thank you.